Today, I want to tell you about TRPC. TRPC is an incredibly cool package that you are going to love if you are a full stack developer. After using TRPC, there is no way I can go back to building APIs using REST or GraphQL. TRPC is just too good. My developer experience and productivity are off the charts when working with it. With the TRPC, you can move fast and break nothing, like their website says. I am sure we have all written code like this. Code where we fetch a URL, we extract data from the response and then use that data. The problem with this code is that it isn't type safe. Our code is expecting the response data to always be an object with a name property. Which means that if for some reason the backend starts to return data with a different shape, our code will break. How cool would it be if the moment something changes in the backend, TypeScript could show us an error saying that the name was changed to full name, for example. That is what TRPC does in real time, sponsored by TypeScript. So let's create our first TRPC API. After importing init TRPC from the TRPC server package, we run the create function to initialize it. After that is done, we create our router, which is where the action will happen. In TRPC, we don't have URLs, we have procedures instead. We create a all movies procedure and we call the query function to say that the procedure is for fetching data. Then inside of the query function, we hit the database to return all movies. Super easy so far. Let's now define another procedure. This time to get a movie by ID. We call the procedure function again. And this time we also call the input function. Here we use Zot, a validation library, to say that as an input for this procedure, we are expecting a string. Then in our query function, we grab the input and use it to find the movie in the database. I know that so far this does not look amazing. But stay with me because here is where things get spicy. The last thing we need to do is export the type of our router so we can give it to the client later. And to serve the API we just made, we use the create HTTP server function and start it in the port 3000. It is important to know that most of the time you won't be serving the API like that. TRPC is meant to be used inside of a framework. Most of the time you will be using TRPC adapters to run it inside of Express, Fastify, Next.js, AWS Lambda, Dino and more. Consuming the API we just made is a piece of cake. In our frontend, we import the router type we exported before and a couple of functions from the TRPC client package. Then we run the create a TRPC client function to create the client, we give it the router type, and we point it to where the server is running, which in our case is localhost 3000. That is all. Now we can use the client to call the procedures we defined before, and as you can see, we will get full TypeScript validation, type inference, and autocomplete. How cool is that? We now have a fully type safe API. If you were working with React, you can fetch data in your components using the TRPC React query integration. To recap, in the backend we create a router, and in the router we create procedures, or functions that our client can call to fetch or send us data. Using functions like input, we specify which type of data the client can send us, and we use the query function to write the logic of our procedure. Finally, we export the type of the router so we can share its type with the client. Then in the front end, we construct a client, give it the type and point it to where our API is running. And then almost like magic, we get a client that can call each procedure in our backend and that is fully aware of the return and input types. Now that we are experts at creating query procedures, we can create mutation procedures. The difference is that a query procedure gets data and a mutation procedure creates, modifies or deletes data. Mutation procedures are as easy to create as the query ones. Back in our server, we now add a new procedure called create movie. We use the input function to specify the type of the data we want to receive. In this case, we want to get an object that has a title string, a year number, and a synopsis string that is not more than 25 characters long. Instead of using the query function, we instead use the mutation function to write our logic. There, we grab the input from the user and use it to create a new movie in our database. We can now go back to our frontend where we will find that our client is now aware of the create movie mutation with autocomplete and validation. How easy was this? Think about how long it would take us to create an API endpoint the normal way compared to how long it took us with TRPC. And now, because we are using TRPC, if I, for example, decide to change from synopsis to overview in my backend, the client in the frontend will be aware of that change automatically. How cool is that? Behind the scenes, when we use TRPC and we create a query or a mutation procedure, TRPC will generate URLs like these ones in our server and those URLs will be then called by the client. But we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to create those URLs and the code to handle them, and we also don't have to write the code to send fetch requests to them. TRPC does it all for us. 
amazing. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Thank you for watching as always. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the TRPC. Do you want to use it? Are you using it already? Write it all below. Onjana, kamsahago, sanam hamida. See you on the next one. Down me boyo. Bye bye.